Welcome to the Doctrine Matters Podcast, a tool to help believers rediscover true biblical doctrine and to help them understand and live out their faith in their homes, in their churches, and in their communities. Thank you for listening to this episode. Let's get right to it. Well, welcome to this episode of the Doctrine Matters Podcast. I am thankful that you have tuned in, whether you are watching on YouTube or whether you are listening to the audio version of this episode. I am thankful that you have decided to at least check it out. Maybe you're going to listen to the first minute, 30 seconds. Maybe you're going to listen to the whole thing. Either way, I'm glad you stopped by. I just want to remind you that this podcast is a part of the Christian podcast community. It is a great place to find wonderful content, wonderful biblical content. So look up the Christian podcast community. There you'll find many episodes of different podcasts with different varieties. And uh, just so happens that this is part of that as well. So thank you for tuning in. And um, I just want to get right to it. Have you ever had to be reminded of something? Now, if you're a guy listening, you've had to be reminded to take out the trash. You've had to be reminded to... Uh, do the dishes, maybe lock the doors at night, maybe take the trash to the street. You've had to be reminded where your car keys are, where your wallet is, all of those things. But every one of us, even if you're a, a lady that is listening, we've all had to be reminded of things. And one of the things that we need to be reminded of, especially as Christians, is the gospel. We need to be reminded of the gospel on a daily basis. Why? Because we should never tire of hearing the gospel, number one, and really, that's number two, but number one, we still need the gospel, even as believers. We need to hear how Jesus saved us, how he shed his blood, how he was buried and rose on the third day. We need to hear that so we can continue to have that hope and be reminded of who we are and who Christ is. But there's something else that I think that we need to be reminded of that I've been looking at in the scriptures lately, and it comes from Romans chapter 12, and it's the first two verses there. And uh, I think that we can be be reminded of these things, and I think that we need to be reminded on a daily basis just as well as the gospel, especially in the world that we live in. Uh, we live in a world where it's so easy to just give in and, and do whatever the world is doing, just go along with the world, because that seems to be the easy thing to do. Nobody wants to do what's hard anymore. Uh, everybody wants to just give in, do the easy thing, go with the flow. But let me tell you something, the easy thing is what leads to destruction. It's that wide open path. Narrow is the way the Bible says. So the thing that we need to be reminded of daily comes from Romans chapter 12, verses one and two. And I'm going to read that from the CSB on this episode. Normally I'm in the ESV or the NASB 95, but I grabbed the, the CSB for this episode. And it says this, therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, and praise God for his mercies, the Bible also says his mercies are new every morning. That's another thing that we need to be reminded of on a daily basis, because we can so easily forget how gracious and how merciful our God is, but his mercies are new every morning, the Bible says. But in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Give your body to the Lord. Give your body as an act of worship. The things that you say, the things that you do, uh, whatever your arms and your hands and your feet, wherever they go, whatever you do, do unto the Lord. And I think that this is a, a very good reminder of us that we should be living for the glory of God, giving our bodies away. Now, we can give our bodies away to many things. We can give our bodies away to the opposite sex. We can give our bodies away to so many different things. We can give our lives to the things of this world. But the Bible says that we need to offer our living bodies as a sacrifice to the Lord. We need to worship Him in all that we do, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship, it says, that we give ourselves away completely to who God is, that we worship and glorify God in all that we do. The Bible says whether we eat or whether we drink and all that you do, 
right? So everything that we do with our bodies, our bodies should be given to the Lord, not the world. It's so easy for us to give ourselves to the things of this world, whether that, again, whether that be a relationship, whether that be a member of the opposite sex, whether that be money, whether that be fame, whether that be uh, anything that you can s just fill in the blank there. It could be anything that you could give your life to, give your bodies to. And the Bible says that we need to present our bodies as worship to the Lord. And then we really get into verse two here. And this is really what I want to focus on the most here on this episode. It says, do not be conformed to this age or the ESV says, do not be conformed to this world. Now, it's so uh, easy to conform to this world. I've already mentioned that. It's so easy to go with the flow and do what everybody else is doing it. I, I, I mean, I, I remember when I was growing up, it says, if if your friends jumped off a bridge, would you do it too, right? And I would obviously say no, because that's kind of silly. You know, they take, uh, moms tend to take some extremes and say, if they do that, are you going to do it too? So this is no new concept. And obviously it's not a new concept because we find this teaching in the scriptures. That we are not to conform to this world or to the pattern of this world. This world here is sinful. This is unregenerate, unbelieving people that are in the world and the God of this world. Now, hear me, the God of the unbelievers, not this world. We know that God is ultimately the God of this world, but the God of the this world is Satan. He is over all the unbelievers. He is over the unregenerate. So the Bible is clear that we as Christians should not conform to the pattern of this world. We should not give ourselves to this world because if we're giving ourselves to the world, then we are acting as if we are unbelievers. We are giving ourselves to sin. Therefore, we are actually submitting ourselves to the prince of the power of the air, as he is called in the book of Ephesians, Satan himself. Because we can't live as Christians, but then turn our back on Christ, turn our back on the Bible, and live in sin, especially habitual sin. Now, we will sin. That's a given. We know that. But there's repentance. There is forgiveness. God says he will forgive those that ask for it, First John 1, 9. And that is a beautiful thing. But when we turn our backs on the Bible to live in this pattern of sin and conform to the world, we're living as though we're unbelievers. And Paul is reminding us here, and I think we need to be reminded on a daily basis, that we cannot conform to the world in which we live in. The CSB says this age, this age here, because there is an age to come, which is our eternal state that we will be with Christ if we are Christians. But if we continue to live in unregenerate, uh, un unrepentant, unconfessed, sin, then it would almost seem as though our lives are marked to be an unbeliever. So a Christian cannot live conforming to the world and be happy and have uh, just a, 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 a long-term satisfaction in that. But if there is, if there is no con conviction, there is no repentance, then I dare say that you are an unbeliever caught up in the world and will die and go to hell in the age to come. So it is good to remind ourselves that we must think clearly through these things. If we are living in a season of sin, is there conviction there? Are you wanting to get out of this sin, leave this sin, and follow Christ and get back in to where you were with the Lord and be obedient to the scriptures. If there is no willingness and want to and desire to get out of that, then I would say that you are likely an unbeliever. But we know that as believers, we can't go back to that old way of living, that old man or woman that we used to be, because we know how far we've come as believers, who we once were, what God has done in our lives, positionally sanctifying us, right? He has removed us from the wrath of God. We are positionally sanctified unto holiness, not unto worldliness. So we cannot live a satisfied life living in worldliness because we are set apart for holiness. So therefore we must check ourselves, check our hearts. If we profess to be in Christ, do we truly live in Christ and desire to live as Christ and be obedient to his word? So we are set apart as Christians, so we cannot effectively live in this world living in sin continually. 
So this is a warning for us. Don't be conformed to the world. I think of a game that my family plays. It's called Cranium. It's got uh, uh, some Play-Doh in it. One of the things that you have to do is it's called Sculptor Age. You take the Play-Doh. You read the card, whatever the card says, you have to mold that image. So it's, we're conforming that Play-Doh into what the card tells us to. So in other words, you are being shaped by the world. If you are conforming to the world and the pattern of the world, you're being shaped by the world. Therefore, you're being shaped by sinfulness. So as believers, we must pull ourselves away from this sinful living, this sinful lifestyle, turn from it, and get back in right standing with the Lord. Just let me be clear, theologically speaking, if you are a believer living in a season of sin, you are already right with God as you are righteous before Him as you've received the righteousness of Christ. So you will never lose that righteousness. However, you could uh, quench the Spirit and stop your sanctification in that moment. But we need to come back out and get in the right position where we need to be with God, aligned with Him, and not with the world. So that's what I mean there by getting back in right standing with God. You never lose your standing as a believer. I believe in the perseverance of the saints. So I don't believe you're going to lose your salvation. You're always righteous before God. However, you are in sin. If you are conforming to the world, therefore you need to get back in the right spot with the Lord and, and repent of your sin and be obedient to the scriptures. So this is a, a very good warning that we need to heed on a daily basis because it could be so easy for us to give in to this world and to do the things that the world is doing and, and really get lost in that if we're not careful. Because remember, wide open is the path that leads to destruction. It's easy to get down this path. It's much more difficult when you go down the narrow road because you've got to kill sin. You've got to mortify the flesh. You've got to do whatever it takes to not live according to this world, but live according to the word. So Paul tells us, do not be conformed to this age or to this world, but be transformed. I'll never forget. I never really liked the show. And then they came out with the movie Transformers, how they would go from these cars, to these gigantic robots. They just transformed into these things. And as it goes from these cars up into these huge robots, it just gets it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So I start thinking about transforming. We have a small view of God when we are living in sin. I believe that. I believe that we think our God is not big enough. I believe that we think that our God is not strong enough and mighty enough, and uh, he is not worthy enough. That tends to be kind of like maybe some underlying thoughts that we might have when we give in to our own pleasures because we think we know best. But when we begin to transform our mind, it begins to grow. Our mind begins to grow. Our knowledge begins to grow. Our thinking begins to grow. It becomes challenged, and we begin, we, we start to live now with the knowledge of the holy and who he is, and we will slowly and sometimes quickly move from this conforming lifestyle to the world, and as our minds are transformed, we can live again unto holiness. And this transformation, it says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that means that we need to be thinking about different things. When we're in the world and we're living for the world and we're doing whatever we want to do, our mind is set on sin, essentially. So I believe that we should change our minds, renew our minds, and as we do that, we start to learn and turn so to speak, learn and turn, leave the world, turn back to Christ. But to renew our mind, we have to set our minds on things above, not things of this world. Colossians chapter three, verse two is clear on that, that we cannot set our minds on things of this world and expect to live apart from it. We have to, as Christians, set our minds on things of, that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, where he is ruling and reigning with the authority to do that as God, the son. So we renew our minds by thinking on the things of God, by submitting ourselves to the scriptures, by being obedient to the scriptures. And the more that we think about God, the more we think about Christ, the more we think about the gospel, the less that we're going to want to give ourselves to the world and be conformed to that image. We want to be conformed to the image of Christ. And to do that, we have to change our thinking. We have to move it back to the things of God and away from the world. So we renew our minds. 
and we think about the things of God. We fill our minds with the things of God. We fill our minds with the scriptures. We fill our minds with meditation. We fill our minds with memorization of scripture. We fill our minds with praying to God and, and just continual med meditation upon his word and being obedient to that. So then we start to live as we are called. We start to live in that manner worthy of our calling. So as we turn and, and transform and renew our mind, we start to live and walk in holiness and not in worldliness. And this is a beautiful thing. So uh, I talked about this with my kids and family worship the other day. I told them that we can fill our minds with so much garbage, whether that be music or movies or uh, listening to our, our friends at, at, at the playground or at the pool or wherever they may find themselves. And, and we just hear it over and over and we can get this into our mind that eventually it will lead to our hands and feet. And that becomes us conforming to the world if we're not careful. So we have to get the junk out of our minds and replace it with the things of God, with his word. And that is very crucial in the life of a believer. You can't just live off food one day a week and expect just to survive and just live off a piece of bread uh, every Sunday once a, once a week. You got to be in the word, living and feasting on the word of God day by day by day. So you can continue to set your mind on those things and not on the things of this world. Cause once you get your mind off the things of God, it's so much easier to get just right back in the world automatically. Almost it seems sometimes it's kind of like a diet. It's so hard to lose the weight, but so easy to put it back on. Because we fill our face full of junk food, we fill our face full of fried food, when we should be eating cleaner, when we should be eating salads and the things alike and working out and exercising and all those things, that's hard. It's much like our life as Christians. It's hard, but it's worth it. How many people do you know that have, have gone on a diet with diet and exercise and they lost tons of weight and they look good, they feel good, and they say it was worth every bit of what I had to sacrifice, what I had to go through, how hard it was, it was worth all of it. The same could be said for our Christian life. It's hard to stay in the Word daily, I'll admit that. It's hard to pray constantly. It's hard to meditate on the word. It's hard to memorize scripture sometimes when there's so much coming in and out that we must block out to be able to take in all that God has for us. It's hard, but just like that person that lost a lot of weight, diet, and exercising, it's worth it. It's worth every single bit of it. So I want to encourage you to put your thinking caps on, so to speak, and I want you to think on the things of God. But let's continue looking into this passage. So that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. I asked my kids this, how can we discern what God's will is? And one of them spoke up and said, by reading the scriptures. I said, absolutely. We know what God's will is, his revealed will in the scriptures, we, we know that. So that means to help our thinking, we have to continually submit to the scriptures, read the scriptures daily, study the scriptures, memorize the scriptures, but most importantly, live out the scriptures, or in other words, apply the scriptures to our lives. We were looking at um, tonight in family worship, Romans 12. We looked at the, the mark of a true Christian, 9 through 13 being how we should interact with those in the church, and then 14 through 21, those outside the church, how we should live. We can only know this by looking at the Word of God and reading it and studying it and then applying it. So if we don't apply the word of God, we just have a lot of knowledge, but we're still living and conforming ourselves to the pattern of this world or this age. So we have to not only know the scriptures, but apply the scriptures. That is what's going to help us renew our mind, change our thinking and live out this Christian life in holiness that God has called us to daily seeking to worship and glorify him and exalt Christ and, 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 and lift up one another, encourage one another along the way. Again, it's not easy, but it's worth it. It's worth every single bit. 
you've got to be able to put some things away, to, to block some things out, to block some time off throughout the day, to think through the scriptures, to read the scriptures, to study the scriptures. You've got to be meditating on the scriptures, and so do I. I'm not just saying that you that are listening or watching have to do this alone. I have to do it as well. I have to memorize scripture. I have to pray constantly. The Bible says that in multiple places, that we should constantly be praying. So as we do that and we think about the things of God, we will naturally begin to become more like Christ in our sanctification and less like the world. So that is something that I want you to take away from this episode whenever you're listening to it, whether it be the day it comes out or a week from now or longer. But I want you to know that you need to remind yourself daily do not conform to this world. Do not conform to this world. Do not conform to this world. Transform. Be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Renew my mind. Renew my mind. Renew my mind. How do I do that? Focus on the scriptures. Be in prayer. The spiritual disciplines, great place to start. Bible intake, scripture memorization, Bible study, prayer, all of those things. So you must do what it takes, even if it's hard. Block out that time. Do it. Remind yourself of it daily and don't fall back into a pattern of sinfulness and living like the world because that's way too easy and you know it, but we need to do hard things. We need to do work for the glory of God, the exaltation of Christ, and for the encouragement and the benefit of the saints. I hope this has been some encouragement for you. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think about this. Help me out with... Uh, your life, if you can add to this uh, or take away from it, whatever. I'd love to hear from you. As always, Doctrine Matters Podcast at gmail.com is how you can get a hold of me. That's all lowercase, all one word, no spaces. Doctrine Matters Podcast at gmail.com. So reach out to me. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, until next time, God bless.